When you think of cities like New Orleans or San Francisco or New York, you immediately conjures up strong identities. These cities have very strong identity, a real sense of place. You even times hear the phrase said, this is so New York or this is so San Francisco. When was the last time any of you heard someone say, this is so DC? <laughs> it is with that intention that I set out to do Busboys and Poets. So in order for me to do that, I had to, I had to define what DC is. Now DC is multifaceted, it is a, a federal city, but it's also a political city, it's a, a literary city, it's a smart city, it's a beautiful city. It has an art scene that is second to none, a theater scene that's only second to New York, and a poetry scene that surpasses every other city in the entire United States. It is also a very political city, as, as I said, and it was an instrumental city in the civil rights struggle of this country in the 1950s and the 1960s. This city was also the birthplace of the Harlem Renaissance, a period of American history that arguably produced more art, culture, and music than any other 10-year period in American history. So I decided to go looking around for the perfect location where I could have busboys and poets. I drove up and down the U Street corridor looking for a space because I know U Street was that cultural hub that for years when, when, when DC and this nation was segregated, this was where the black community lived, played, wrote books, wrote poetry, all of that. This street was called Black Broadway. U Street was called Black Broadway. It was a place where jazz was played, where music was sung, where poetry was spit, and where, where people like Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston and Duke Ellington walked the streets. I looked around to see what changes were taking place. There was a lot of changes that were taking place. Of course, after 1968 and the riots, people left the city in droves. There were lots of buildings with boarded up, uh, with boarded up housing and all of that. But when people left, they started to come back in the 90s and the early 2000s. There were cranes everywhere. Buildings were being built everywhere. Buildings that were trying to conjure up the past, but really not that, that effectively, I thought. There was a building named the Ellington, for instance, that was going up at the corner of 13th and U Street. Of course, named after Duke Ellington. I wondered whether many of the residents that were moving in even knew that that building was actually named after Duke Ellington. I looked around to see what kind of retail spaces were on the first floor, and there was a Mexican restaurant, there was a Thai restaurant, and I had to do a double take when I saw a tanning salon. A tanning salon in a building called the Ellington on a street that used to be called Black Broadway. As I turned the corner, I saw a building that was being erected called the Langston Lofts. I knew that that would have to be a building that would honor the legacy of Langston Hughes and speak to the history of the community in that area. That's when I set out to do Busboys and Poets. Busboys and Poets is a place where cultural and social connections are consciously uplifted. It is a place where art, politics, and culture come together and intentionally collide. It is a place for people to take a deliberate pause and look around and take in the history of the area and the community. We believe by creating such a place, we can actually transform the area and transform the neighborhood and transform the city. In the back of, of, uh, of uh, the first bus board, in, in, in the back of the first bus boards and poets, I put a big mural that I painted. I adorned the whole place with art that represented the community and the area. And on top of that mural, I wrote a poem by Langston Hughes up there. It's one of my favorite poems called Let America Be America Again. And it goes, let America be America again. Let it be the land it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain, seeking a home where he himself is free. America was never America to me. Let America be the dream, the dreamer's dream. Let it be the strong land of love, where neither kings connive nor tyrants scheme, that any man be crushed by one above. My favorite poem of Langston Hughes, and it's written on top of that mural in a room called the Langston Room. Weeks before I was opening Busboys and Poets, I was sitting, waiting for a permit to arrive, 
and uh, it was a, actually a Sunday afternoon. And I noticed two elderly black women were walking, trying to peer through the paper that we had on the windows. I came out and I said, come on in, I'll show you around. They walked in, they looked around, they took in a lot of that history that was on the walls. They nodded approvingly. They walked to the back and I took them to the Langston room. I opened the door and they saw the mural. They stood for, for a moment, they saw people like Rosa Parks, people like Fannie Lou Hamer, people like Alice Walker, people like Martin Luther King and Gandhi. And I didn't know what they were gonna think. They stood for a minute and I turned around and happened to see one of them had a tear coming down her eyes. That's when I knew I had created a place that was so DC. I thank you. Thank you very much.